This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Last month, Poland performed its largest military parade in years, and a couple of days ago, the Polish Defence Ministry announced it was buying nearly 500 HIMARS systems, roughly 20 times what Ukraine currently has. This is all part of Poland's massive military renewal, which involved spending roughly 4% of GDP on defence, more than any other NATO member. So in this video, we're going to have a look at Poland's plan to become a military superpower, how it compares with other European countries, and whether Poland can afford it. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, the first thing to say is that a lot of YouTube channels, including us, have done videos related to this topic before. We're going to focus a little bit more on the political and economic implications here, but if you want to know more about the weapons themselves, then we recommend that you watch those other guys' videos. They're great. So let's get straight into it. The headline story here is that Poland is increasing its military budget from about 50 billion zloty, or about 11 billion US dollars, to nearly 100 billion zloty, or about 23 billion US dollars. This means that Poland's defence budget now represents about 4% of GDP, twice the NATO target more than any other NATO member, and includes plans to double the size of the armed forces from 150,000 to 300,000 personnel by 2035, which would give Poland the largest land force in all of Europe. Now, we don't know precisely how this money will be spent, because, like most other countries, Poland keeps most of its military contracts secret, but they have publicly announced a couple. Earlier this week, for example, Poland announced plans to buy nearly 500 HIMARS launchers, with deliveries due to begin sometime in 2025. For context, Ukraine has received something like 20 HIMARS launchers, and the US itself currently only has about 400. Lockheed Martin has only produced just over 500 since production started in the early 2000s. On top of this, Poland is also buying US-made F-35 fighter jets, Apache helicopters, Abrams tanks, and more Patriot missile systems, as well as billions of dollars worth of South Korean manufactured tanks and howitzers. Poland also wants to use some of the money to develop its domestic arms industry, with reports suggesting that Poland wants to manufacture its own ammunition for the HIMARS and Abrams tanks it's buying from the US. Poland already has a budding domestic defence industry, which produces stuff like Crab howitzers, Pyron anti-aircraft missiles, and Rossimak infantry vehicles, but it doesn't really do big-ticket items like tanks and ships yet. Now, it's worth saying that, while Poland's military budget might be the highest in NATO relative to GDP, in absolute terms it's still dwarfed by countries like France, the UK, and Germany, let alone America. For context, Germany, France and the UK all spend more than $50 billion a year on defence, which is still more than double Poland's spending. But absolute measurements probably underestimate Poland's military for two reasons. First, the other big European countries like France and the UK have invested a lot of that money into small professional forces supplied with high-tech kits designed for limited overseas engagements. This is because, before the war in Ukraine, no Western country really imagined they'd ever have to fight an old-fashioned attritional land war, so they instead invested in the sorts of forces that could be quickly deployed abroad for specific missions. Conversely, Poland's massive investment in its military is a reaction to Putin's invasion of Ukraine, which is why Poland is spending the money not on high-tech gear, but on stuff that's worked in Ukraine, like HIMARS systems and infantry superiority. The second reason absolute measurements probably underestimate Poland's military is that Poland gets a lot more bang for its buck than these countries, especially Germany. The German Bundeswehr is arguably one of the most ineffective bureaucracies in history. That might sound like hyperbole, but the extent of waste in the German army is truly astonishing. Despite spending something like $50 billion a year in 2019, Germany announced it had only enough ammunition to last two or three days of fighting. And Germany's procurement agency is still yet to find a standard assault rifle to replace the G36, which was withdrawn in 2015 after it turned out it didn't work in hot weather. 
Things got so bad that a couple of years ago, German troops painted some broomsticks black and mounted them to armoured vehicles during joint exercises to pretend to their NATO allies that they had enough guns. And in 2020, the highest ranking officer in the German army warned that the Bundeswehr didn't have a single deployable brigade. For context, a brigade usually consists of about 5,000 troops, which means that for $50 billion, Germany can't cobble together 5,000 troops, while Poland is planning on 300,000 troops while spending less than half what Germany spends. They're making good progress here as well. Poland saw the largest number of new recruits join the armed forces since the end of compulsory military service in 2008. So you get the idea. If Poland follows through on its new spending plans, it could plausibly end up with the most combat-capable army in Europe. However, spending this much money won't be politically easy. While most Polish voters do currently want to increase the defence budget, which is why the ruling Law and Justice Party have started announcing stuff like the HIMARS systems just a few months before the election, spending this much money will require cuts elsewhere. Economists often talk about guns or butter. Essentially, a country only has so much productive capacity, so it can either invest it in defence, i.e. guns or nice stuff for its citizens, like butter. If the war in Ukraine ends, or if Polish voters' priorities change for some other reasons, the Polish government might well find itself under pressure to redirect some of its defence budget to other stuff like welfare or cost of living. Now, the Polish government have argued that this is a false dilemma, and that investing in Poland's domestic defence industry will create high-paying Polish jobs and bring in foreign currency. However, they're already having to borrow quite a lot to afford their current expenditure. And last year, the government scrapped a bond sale after international investors demanded unpalatably high interest rates, prompting an opposition politician to tweet that the defence ministry is buying without a plan or money. All in all, while polls are clearly pretty keen on the idea, spending 4% of GDP will strain the Polish purse strings, and the long-term political viability of the idea will probably depend on whether the Polish economy can maintain its impressive growth in the future. Now, you just spent around 8 minutes watching a video to help you learn about the world around you. And that feels good, right? Well, that's the feeling you get from spending time learning and bettering yourself. And if you want to do this more, then we have good news. Long-term supporter of the channel, Brilliant, are giving the first 200 people who sign up using our link 20% off their annual premium subscription. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform which is full of all kinds of courses which can help you improve your career and further improve your understanding of the world. They have more than 100 courses on everything from predicting with probability to how technology works to the concept of infinity. And these may sound like topics that you need to dedicate a lot of your time to, but you really don't. You can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and you can do this anywhere, anytime. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Brilliant for supporting TLDR.